Hi guys! I am back with another tutorial. Um, today I am going to be continuing my videos as far as zodiac signs and I am going to be doing Gemini. So for Gemini, <clears throat> you have to be born between May 21st and June 20th. If that's you, huzzah. If it's not, it's okay. Um, I have been waiting because, in case you don't know, I have a new setup. Hopefully, I will have that in the description box. I wrote it in my notes to put that in the description box. And just bear with me because it is hotter than you know what in here. It is hot. Um, I have no AC where I live um, yet. Um, it is hot. I have the doors closed. I have the windows closed. I have two fans. You see my big fan back there. Just in case of an emergency. And I have to turn it on. Like, my skin's oily. My... It's a nightmare. Okay. <clears throat> so, first, I am going to be using primers. I am going to be using these two. These have been... These were my favorite silicone primers. They still are. I just happen to like the L'Oreal one a little bit more. But they're still good. Um... These are from Ulta, that you can see. I'm going to be using the, the Poreless Primer, which is this one, for my nose and T-zone, because my pores are really popping out, because it's hot. For my thermostat in my house, it says it's 83. Uh, my room's the hottest room in the house, so, of course, it's like 20 degrees hotter, so of course it's like 100. Why not have it at 100 degrees, you know? It's not like you can tell I'm hot, you know? Like, you can't tell. And you can also tell I've been very tired. As you can tell from my dark circles. I do have my light on. Yeah. It is hot in here. Now I'm going in with the matte one. And this should stop all the shininess. I am hoping. Because I am putting on a stick foundation. I'm not planning on going out. I'm planning to do stuff around the house. Today. Well, it didn't really help as far as shining, but... Oh, well, maybe it did. Oh. It's been so long since I've picked up a camera. It's been at least a couple of weeks. The first video that I did coming back was my slime review, my watermelon slime review. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's actually really fun. Um, yeah. I have all my notes. It's making me look professional. I mean... It's just a little notebook, but still. Um, okay. Foundation. Oh, I forgot to name the colors I gotta use. For Gemini, I have to use light green, white, and rose. Which is like a pink. Like, really light pink. Not a fan. But, I'll do my best. I think I have something in mind that's gonna be a little more creative. More fun. So then it's not so bad for me. Um, okay. For foundation, I'm using the Makeup Revolution Fast, what's this called? Fast Base Stick Foundation, and this is in the shade F3. It's a little dark for me. Just a little bit. It's got the right undertone. It's just dark. Oh, this is melting. Wonderful. I'm not usually a big fan of stick foundations. They just never blend well on me, but... You know, I've been wanting to try it out in the summer heat. Because summer is definitely here. Okay, uh, after you basically spread that all over your face. I am going to be using my brush. This is the It Cosmetics... Or it brushes for Ulta 115. This is the airbrush one. 
This is the one that's really weird. I'm gonna bring them in. It is a very nice foundation. It's just, it doesn't really last. But today that doesn't really matter because I'm not going out. I have already been out. I have been all over the place. Oh, I added way too much. Wow, we. Yeah, I have to keep checking it because my face, it, this foundation usually isn't this dewy on me, but I'm thinking because of the hot weather and because it's legit 100 degrees in my room, it's like this. And I don't look like I have a white cast anymore. See? That's so pretty. I mean, you still see my dark circles. But it's still pretty. Probably while I'm editing this video, I'll have my fan on. Just to make it a little easier on me. Because right now it's a little... It's getting a little bit hot. I'm gonna add a little more. This is like a medium coverage foundation. So, it does take a little bit, but with the right primers, it does last. Normally, stick foundations don't. Um, I've been wanting to try the Hourglass Vanish Stick. I hear that one's really good. So I'm kind of curious about it. Problem is, is like the price range is ridiculous. But then again, any foundation that I pay for, especially my favorite one, is like thirty nine. So, you know. Um, so, so far this actually looks really good. This is actually a lot more dewy than normal, but it's really nice. <whistles> Shiny! Hello! See, normally in the winter I have drier skin, but when summer hits, oh, the oils come out to play. It's not fun. But, in any case, I have techniques to keeping it on, so, which you will see in the video, which is an end video. Um, let me move these over to the side. I am, I have my coffee right here. It has been so hot so far. I know that the other day, it was like 92, and it's like May. I don't even want to know what June and July is going to be like. I, I don't want to know. Okay. Now, I have a new, newer technique for this. Um, I've been waiting to do this. So, I'm going to take my It Cosmetics. It came in like a kit like this. It's very expensive. But, I've been wanting to do this for a little bit now. Should be clean. But I'm taking the Maybelline Master Conceal in 20 Light. Now this is definitely too dark. I'm aware. But I want to see if my theory's correct. If it's more dark and yellow based, will it be like a color corrector and a concealer? You know, I'm literally only adding like the little bit. That little bit. And I'm taking my brush and I'm going to brush it. Ooh. It 
definitely worked. It's definitely dark. Yeah, you're dark. Okay, so now that I've spread that out, I do have a tissue next to me to clean my brush. Yeah, that's definitely too dark. Now I'm going to use my sponge that I normally use for concealer. This is the Morphe Conceal Sponge thing. And I'm going to buff that out. Oh, yeah. Hey, that actually worked. Okay. That works. I can deal with that. I'm going to look up and do it. Get the creases out. Boom. That's not bad. I mean, you still know that I have dark circles, but you can't see it that much. Okay. Anyway. I'm going to take the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in 00 Fair. Basically white. And I'm going to put that under my eyes. To highlight. And this is already watery, so it doesn't feel like it melted. I'm going to put that down my nose, on my forehead. Oh, cool, but the bolt. My chin. But really, some more on my forehead because we don't need any of that. Boom. Okay. I'm going to blend. I mean, this really feel this concealer really feels good. I mean, this feels really good. It's watery, but it has coverage. Like, it's thin, but it has coverage. Does that make sense? That didn't make any sense. It's like a... Oh, what were they called? Oh. Uh, I can't remember what they were called. Blendy pens. Is that what it was? where they would change color? It's kind of like that. When it first goes on, you think it's going to be super thick. And then it like thins out and it's like an airbrush. 90s, man. I don't even think they have those around anymore. Shows I'm getting older. Man. Okay. So now that I have that done, my hair keeps getting in the way. Don't need that right now. Thank you. Okay, so right now, my makeup actually looks pretty good. I'm kind of proud. Okay, so for my face and for underneath my eyes, I am using the Fenty Beauty Powder in Butter. I normally use lavender for under my eyes. Um, and do like this really bright highlighted look. Not today. Okay, sorry. I had a little, little interruption. But, I'm going to take out all the creases. mystery bumps on my face so if you see those don't worry about them um so i'm gonna use the other side of my sponge dip into the powder just like that and set under my eyes and actually i'm gonna dump the powder into the lid because oh boy i'm gonna need it It is hot in here. Mm-hmm. And I also didn't put concealer in my crease 
the creases of my nose or my mouth today because I don't need to look like that, you know, I'm just staying inside, it's hot, I have no AC no matter where I go, I don't even have AC at work, I am powdering my lids of my eyes, oh my gosh, this feels so good. Now this I know wears for at least 12 hours. So I know when I set with this, I'm set for a while. I don't think I've ever set a camera with this foundation. I don't think. I would have to go in, back in my videos on YouTube and find it. Because I don't have the content, like the videos that are now uploaded on YouTube, I no longer have those on my phone. They have been long gone. I do not have enough room on my phone to keep them all, unfortunately. But, it's okay. I totally understand. Man, this powder is really good. I've never used butter for under my eyes. Oh. I'm putting some more in the lid and I'm taking my powder sponge, it's just this one, and I'm going to powder my face. Oh, this is a lot better. See, oh man, I got powder everywhere. See, when picking out my table, because I got all of this myself, I did not ask for help. I built this table myself, given it was from Ikea, and all I did was follow the manual and built everything myself. I wanted to get black brown, or brown black, or whatever they call it, because it fits my room better, because my room's neon green, in case you couldn't tell. But it's very, very nice, very professional. The problem is, is there's a lot of makeup and a lot of powder and it just goes everywhere. And what concerns me is that, like, basically the powder is going to get all over the table and it's going to seep into the wood and then I'm not never going to get it out. I do have a placemat right here, but... I don't know, I'm kind of iffy, man. Okay. Oh, that feels so good. <laughs> Look, my face isn't so shiny anymore. Okay. But it's not as shiny as it was. You know, it's nice. <sighs> anyway. I'm going to put on a little more powder for under my eyes to catch any fallout. No big deal. There's a lot of fallout with some of these eyeshadows, especially the ones I use. Um, there is quite a bit of fallout. Um, and so I'm just lightly setting under my eyes and baking. That's what the thing is, is baking under your eyes. It was really popular back a couple years ago. And now it's back. And so. Oh boy. I see a lot of beauty gurus do this, so I'm going to do it just to see what it's like. For me, it works. That's a lot of powder. Oh, the reason why I blow all my powders like that is because they get stuck around the, the powder gets stuck around the rim, 
and my sponge can't reach it, my finger can't reach it, so I have to blow on it and make sure it doesn't leak everywhere. Yeah, it's one of those. Okay, sponge gets put back. It's so nice having shelves like right here because I can literally just, it's so nice. And also I went to Dollar Tree and got some organizers. So now everything's organized and I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud that I built it. It's so cool. I'm proud of myself. Sorry. I'm having a proud moment. It's like a proud mom moment. It's, it's just a thing. It's very hard. Okay, anyway. Now that I can stop being a drama queen. So, the colors that I need to use are light green, white, and rose which is basically like a champagne -y kind of pink like really really super light pink so because that's so light and so like like not natural but like like nature themed I have a little bit of a bit of an idea. I don't know how well it's going to go. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully. I say that as I'm getting ready to get started. Okay. I need to get brushes. I'm going to be using the Jaclyn Hill set today because I haven't used these in a while and to be honest, I don't know why haven't used them, you know, because they're pretty. They're very pretty. They're very nice. So, I'll use this. And I probably will use, like, my normal... Like, this is, like, my blending out brush for under the brow. Probably going to use this. This is very fancy. I also need to remember to write down in my notes, as I say all the time, my videos aren't very edited, so this isn't going to be edited that much. Um, and I... I already have what I'm going to use written down now, so I can put it in the description box. I know that in a couple of videos I haven't done that because there's just so much in there. And like, it's like I literally watch my entire video, that whole hour and 30 or hour and 10 minutes. I literally watch that whole entire video just to type down what's in the description box. And don't get me wrong, like, my videos are long, and they're long for a reason. Because they're unedited. But they're very informative, and they're very... I really try to make them as informative as possible, and try to make it as fun as possible. Which is why I talk way too much. Anyway. Starting off this look, I am taking the Morphe and James... Charles palette. I got this a while ago and I'm still trying it out. I kind of I have some issues with it but it's not bad. It's just a different way of using eyeshadows and eye pigments. Yeah. It's just different. I'm not used to it. Okay. So I'm taking my BH Cosmetics, the numbers have worn off on these, but this is the number 7. This is the one I blend out my brows with. And I am taking the shade Flashback, which is the white, and I'm going to put that from brow to red. It's just going to go, you can see, loaded with product, and... 
Now his white eyeshadow is like light. It's buildable white, which he did mention in his video when he came out with the palette. It's not like a bright white. It's like a buildable white, which I like to a certain extent. Sometimes it's better than others. You know, like sometimes I want that pigmented white, like the ABH Riviera palette, the white that's in there. That is amazing. Or the Vizzy Art palette white, or my Beauty Treats white that I'm out of. It's very sad. That's a nice white. Okay. Next. Because... I am extra, as usual. I am taking the Take Me Back to Brazil palette. And I still have the sleeve. I always keep my sleeves. And I'm going to take the JH32 brush. This is the white brush. I don't know. I just find it very relaxing for the crease. And I'm going to take a mixture of this dark, darker light green. Like these two greens. They don't have names. Which I think they missed a big opportunity on. Good job. Okay, so I'm taking a mixture of those. On my brush. And you can see they're very bright. And I am putting that in the crease. Taking some more. I don't know why I find this brush so relaxing for my crease. It just is. And like it's so weird because it's not like a brush I would gravitate towards normally. I'm more into my um, BH Cosmetics, I don't know what number it is, I don't know what number this is, this is, I've used it so much, to want, but I'm more towards brushes like a cone shaped rather than like a flat tamper, it's weird, I don't know. I'm just weird like that. And so, I am using this. Now, when I read the description on a Gemini, obviously Gemini are twins. Um, if you don't know that, you know now. So, I'm kind of thinking of, like, something along the lines of, like, obviously I want my eyes to represent twins. Because I have two of them, you know. They may not be identical twins, but they're twins. <sighs> That's my family. It's my mom. Hi, mom. Your, your voice is on camera. My mother is very loud. So if you can hear that on camera. I love you, mom. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Mm, that lighting, man. And this does have a lot of fallout. You can see on the side of my eyes all the fallout. Remember this little guy? Boom. So this is what I have so far. And all it is is I'm basically blowing it out because I'm dramatic. And I need to blow out my crease sometimes. No. It happens. You just gotta just blow it out. I do have a tissue by my side. Because I know how pigmented they are. Like, it's rubbing off on my tissue. I'm not. And then, because I have this space down... 
I'm going back in with the James Charles palette and I'm going into Social Blade which is the lime green that is in here which I will show you because when I got my palette it broke but it's this one down here and I am going to put that deeper into my crease because right now I have the transition shade so that shade is going deeper into my crease and I even looked back at the description of Gemini and it did say that I could use different shades of green to show creativity and I do think I'm a creative person I mean hello my other eye looks you know I do try to be creative but see everything's been taken up so it's very hard to come up with your own original content and it's so it, it sucks <laughs> Because, like, all of my creative ideas that I had before I even started YouTube, poof, gone. Very upset by it. I should have done it, and I didn't do it. Okay. Whew, it is hot. Alright, I'm going back in with the two lighter greens from this palette. Take me back to the palette. And I'm going to blend out that Social Blade green, whatever, you know what I mean. I was actually really excited to get this palette because it's so versatile. Like, you could basically use it as an everyday palette. Like, you could find a look for it. There are a few shades that I have had trouble with, um, even though I looked back at Jeff. Uh, James's video on when he released the palette some of the shades man like I just couldn't get it to work with me I finally found the technique for it it's very difficult getting there very difficult okay now I'm going back in with social blade and I'm just gonna add a little bit more but not like as far as the crease, I'm going kind of like to the outer V and into the crease. So it's kind of like that. I know it's hard to see on camera because greens are very hard to work with. Not in the sense of blendability or anything. I mean, greens are pretty hard to blend. But making them look distinct from one another, from different shades. So like if you put in a dark green versus a light green... It looks good if it's blended correctly. If it's not blended correctly, you'll look like the Grinch. And then some. If you have two lighter greens, like what I have, you can't even tell that there's two separate shades of green. So, it can be a little tricky to work with. Um, oh, I need to blend that out. I'm going back in with the white, which is called Flashback. And I am going to blend out the lighter green and keep blending because, oh boy, I really didn't think that through. And another thing with greens, something that I've noticed, at least on me, is that they transfer easy. So say you have green in your crease, it will go up to your brow bone just by magic. Just happens. I don't know what it is. <sighs> okay. I don't think I need this brush. Do I ever need my concealer brush? Okay, so now I am going to go ahead and get my palette ready. So I'm going in with the BH Cosmetics Sylvia Ghani palette. And I am taking the shade Rosé, which is literally like rose, but it's like the fancy way of saying it. So right here, that's the perfect shade, right there. And I have something that I'm going to put over it to make it really pop and really rosy. Rosé. It was a joke. I try at jokes. I do try. Um, I am going to cut the crease. And make this look really sharp and pretty. Or at least try to. Um, I'm going to be using the LA Girl. I don't know, 
ones are Pro Conceal, this one, the white one. It really says highlighter, but, you know. I already put on white concealer. I don't really need to put on another one. But this is really good for cut creases. I do know that from experience off of YouTube. So I'm going to put a huge glob on my hand. Ooh, that is melting. And I'm going to put some on the brush. And boop, 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 boop. Cut my crease. I am cutting this a little lower than what I nor or a little higher than what I normally would. Only because my eyes just do better that way, like as far as shape. I also notice I ramble a lot. Now, I do kind of want rough edges, so like that, and I am making this quite bigger than what I normally have my cut creases to be, so this is going a lot higher and a lot wider. Um, because the idea that I have, it's going to be a little bit. I know I've used the technique of like looking up and looking around and like that gives me a defined line which it does so I'm kind of doing that kind of not doing that my hair is still getting in the way hair <laughs> I do need to get my hair cut to be honest I mean I haven't had my hair cut in like a year <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my hairdresser. It's just... I just don't have the time anymore like I used to. Okay, so I've cut my crease a little higher. You can kind of see, like, the white cast on the edge. But that's not really going to matter. Because I am going to... Go back in and kind of blend it. So that edge is still going to be there. It's just not going to be as visible. I am taking off that concealer from the back of my hand. Not like there's a lot left, but you know. Put that back. Boop. Okay. So I'm going in with rose. Now first I'm applying it dry. Because, I mean, look at that. Ooh. First I'm applying it dry. Because... When I do go over it wet, like when I spray 6 plus and go over it wet, I want to make sure that the concealer is set first. You know? Like, I don't want to work so hard on this cut crease and then it, like, fall apart on me. You know? I kind of I kinda want something afterwards. I want some good results, you know? I am wiping my finger afterwards because the concealer does get on your fingers a little bit. Normally I tap it out, but you know, I decided to be different. And the idea that I have for this is actually going to be really, really cool. I mean, I'm really digging into this eyeshadow though. Um, This is actually not a bad color. It's just like this rose pink color is too dark than what I was imagining, which is why I'm going over with a different color. I mean, it's not bad. It's just I prefer for this look to have a lighter pink. Everything's light anyway. And when I think of rose, this is not the color I think of. This is definitely not it. Um, 
my kind of version of a rose is like a very pale pink, like a baby pink kind of. Yeah. Okay. Now I am going to take some of rose on my finger. Just for giggles. That's lavender. Which one's my. Aha! Here we go. So I am taking my Max 6 Plus in Rose. How ironic. Um, I'm gonna. Whew. That smells so gross and so good at the same time. And I'm applying that wet onto my eyelids. And don't worry if it gets on the green because we're going back over the green anyway. And so, or over with the green anyway. So it's not really going to matter because the green is a little more pigmented than this pink. And the more you scrub, like not scrub on the green, but the more that you put on the green, the less of the rose you're gonna see. So it's gonna be a little wicked. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Obviously, in natural light, it's gonna look a lot better. It just looks a little dark. Because I have my lamp up here and then I have this light on so it's kind of like blurred out a little bit. Because I don't need that anymore. I am adding another shimmer onto my lids before we move on to the green. Okay. So I'm going in here and I'm taking Sister from the James Charles palette, which is this pale pink right here. That is my version of a rose color. So I'm taking that on my finger. Ooh, that is wicked. And I'm putting that just on the center of my lids. Nowhere else, just the center. Just to bring out my eyes a little and make them a little bigger. In case you didn't know, halo eyes make your eyes look bigger. I just thought everyone might want to know that. Okay, I am putting that just on the center. Why does that not show up on my face? And so that brings out my eyes a little bit. Mmm. That looks really pretty. Okay. Since I'm in the James Charles palette, I'm going back in with Social Blade, which was the lime green color. I'm tapping off the excess. And I'm going around these edges here that... The cut crease kind of got over on and also blending it a little bit to make it very light. And I really like this is another thing I like about this brush. You can kind of get like right on the crease. I'm going back in with the BH Cosmetics palette with those two greens that we used as transition shades. And I'm going to blend above that and really blend it out. Really just really blend it out. It's very nice. Ouch! Hit my elbow. And then going back in with Flashback, which is the white, and I am going to blend out my edges underneath my brow bone. I am kind of thankful at this point 
if this is a buildable white. Because if it wasn't right now, oh boy. We would have ourselves a crisis. Yay! I'm so excited on how that looks. That looks a lot better than what I expected it to be. Now here I go with the drama and with the shenanigans. I need to put this back. Okay. For the creative part, I'm going to take my liner brush and what I'm going to attempt to do is do a rose on both eyes. Um, and do very light and creative because one trait about Gemini that I kept seeing was being creative, um, you know, and being indecisive. That was another one. I don't generally agree with that trait. I am not a Gemini, but I don't know any Geminis that are indecisive. Anyway, so in honor of being creative for Gemini's sake. I am going to attempt to put a rose on both eyes using liquid lipstick and eyeliner. Um, it did say that I could use black if I wanted to, but I think that's going to just take away from this, which I don't want. I, I really like how creative this looks right now because this isn't normally like something you would put together on your own. Um, so I am going to attempt to draw a rose. There are a couple ways I can do it. I'm just going to go for it. So I am taking Jeffree Star's Watermelon Soda. This smells so good. Oh my god. It does smell like watermelon. Okay. I'm good to, going to put this on the back of my hand. It is kind of melting, so maybe that works for the better. And I'm using this liner brush. This is the Ulta Beauty Pointed Liner Brush. And I'm going to put some on. Oh boy. And what I'm going to do is basically do an outline of a row. So like, just basically really blobby. Just really blobby. You'll see how this becomes a rose. And I do take art classes, so I'm kind of just uh, like what the outline of a rose would be. Now, obviously, this isn't going to look exactly the same on both eyes, but it's the thought that counts. One and two, Gemini's or the Gemini symbol are twins, the sign. Are twins but they never say whether they're identical or not I'm assuming they're identical that looks too circly so I need to okay. yeah they look super they look nothing alike The good thing about Jeffree Star's lipsticks is they dry fairly quickly. So. Okay. So we have the outline of a rose and it filled in. Trust me. Let's make this a lot easier. A lot easier. Make that clear. Okay. So now that I have that done. I am taking the Wet n Wild Emerald or Liquid Katsu lipstick in Emerald City, which is the green. Now this was in the Halloween collection 2017, 2016. Um that collection was their best Halloween collection ever. Just saying. So I'm taking that on my hand. And I am going to put a little leaf 
on the side. You know, just kind of like right here. And just kind of find a really good spot for it. It does not have to be in the exact place. Unless you want it that way. Do not worry. All, I, all I'm doing here is putting like a pointed, rounded triangle. And what I'm doing, just to bring a little bit of authentic... So I'm kind of taking the line and going in a little bit just to show that it's part of the rose and not like just stuck to the outside if you want to do it that way. This is a very simple rose. This is not a complicated rose. This is very easy to do. All I did was put a blob of pink lipstick and a blob of green lipstick. Now they're not even, I know, if that bothers you, I'm sorry. Um, if you don't want to deal with symmetry, you can only put, you can put this on just one eye, if that's what you choose, but you know, everybody's different. Okay, now to bring out like the petals part of the rose. I am going to be taking my white eyeliner. This is the Urban Decay Razor Sharp Longwear Liquid Eyeliner in Bump. So it's basically the white. And I am going to first do the middle of the rose because that's a lot easier than trying to do outside going in. So I am going to do the center of the rose first, kind of do a little spiral. It doesn't look like a spiral. Okay, you can do a dot. Um, and kind of draw like wiggly lines outside of that. Or what I do is I have my elbow on the table and I'm looking into my mirror and I am just taking from that dot and drawing really kind of like what rose petals would look like and taking a small amount of eyeliner at a time um, because if you don't it's gonna look really clumpy like I just did and your lines are going to end up really thick and eventually you'll be able to kind of like draw a line to where it meets up and then you can do like a white outline because it will kind of mix with the pink a little so you know you can't help that from happening but it's actually not a bad thing because Kind of brings more authentic to it, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> Can't reach that far, but that's what it looks like. And you do the same on the other side. So you start with like a dot or a ton of dots, and then from there you draw out like rose petals. So I mean, there's really no instruction to this because rose petals are different on each rose. So... And you just kind of go with the flow. Like, there's no rules. There's no... You know, there's not a handbook that says... You know, you have to draw a rose this way, you have to do it this way, because honestly... Each rose is different. It has a different pattern. The petals are in a different place. You know, that's just how it is. And that's what my other one looks like. So this is what that one looks like. This is what the other one looks like. Geminis are twins. They don't state whether they're identical or fraternal. 
But in my case, it's a fraternal toy. But still thought that counts. Still thought that counts. Very important. we have all of that done and as I'm letting this dry I'm going to do my brows I am using the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow definer and I'm going to do my brows now if you drew your roses as high as I did just be careful you know you don't want brown on your eye or on your rose and it's actually very helpful to realize where you're putting the rows and where your brows are going to be. Now, if you do your brows before you do your makeup, your eye makeup, if that's your routine, okay. <laughs> I am not one of those people. I have tried to be one of those people. But no matter what, it just turns out so bad. I don't know why. But for some reason, it just does not turn out very pretty. And I don't know if it's just my eye shape, or I have a very confused eyebrow. Look at this. Man, that looks weird. My allergies have been really bad, so if my eyes look red, they are. <laughs> um, I'm just going to put a spoolie through my brows. Um, I don't know why, but whenever I carve out my brows, it never comes out right. I don't know if it's because my eyebrows are different shapes. Or what. It's kind of upsetting. Because for some eye looks that I do, I'm like, man, I wish I had carved out eyebrows. It's just something that happens. I'm taking a drink. Oh, that is so good. Not sponsored. These are good. Especially the mocha ones. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, to brush off the fallout. Okay. Everything should be dry at this point. I'm going to take my bigger brush and brush off the powder that I put on there. There's not much of it left. I know in the camera it's very deceiving, but I have been sweating. And the powder looks nice. You know, you know my oily skin's starting to come back. That pore filler really helped out, especially right up in here. I do have like these random bumps coming up on my skin. That's not because of the foundation or anything. That's just in general. I don't know where they came from. Um, this is the first time I've worn makeup in a while. Um, the last time I wore makeup was in a review and that was the last time I ever wore makeup until today and that was like two weeks ago makeup out it's been a while <laughs> to say the least it's been a while um so now that everything's situated with that I am debating on what to do on the lower lash line or if I want to do a little lash line Hmm. I'm gonna hold off on it. I may go back in. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna do anything on the lower lash line. But I am going back in with Sister, which is that pale pink shade from the James Charles palette. And I'm gonna put that in my inner corner. And put it kind of in the beginning of my duct. I, my waterline, my, whatever that is. Right. Put those back in. I do keep the names. I'm very upset that they don't have the names on 
printed on the palette. I am one of those people that would prefer that. It's a lot easier for me to go by. No, well, it's just easier. Why do companies have to make it so hard? Just put the names on the palette. Sylvia Ghani did it. I'm a salty person about that. Like, it just makes it so much harder to reference it. And it's part of my job. Like, okay, YouTube is not my job yet, but... Point being... I just get very upset about it. Okay. Now. For my waterline, I am going in with NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. Basically white. And I am going to put that just in my waterline. This does not last in the waterline for me, but I caught the lid. Oh my god, it's the first time I've caught the lid in a while. Okay. So you see, brings out my eyes. Okay. Now, for my eyelashes, I got this set at Five Below. This is Gina Beauty. This is the whole eyelash set. It's got the curlers, the lashes thing, and the tweezers. I've been looking for those lash tweezers for your fake lashes for a while now. Um, I've never been able to find them until now. Um, I finally found them, and I'm actually really excited about it. But I do want to try out these curlers because they're like my Revlon ones. Boreal ones. They're either Revlon or Boreal. Put that on a bit. And I'm just going to curl my lashes right now. Ooh, these are weird. Oh, but they do curl. Wow, they curl a lot. They're more flat. But they, like, curl. Like... How does that even work? They curl? But they're like flat, like they're like... Those are weird. Okay, I'm taking my L'Oreal Unlimited Mascara. And I am going to put that on my eye. Still getting in the way. On oh, my lower lashes too. This is a really good mascara for lower lashes. They don't look too spidery. They look just like the right amount. So now you see, they don't look too spidery. They look natural. So if you want a mascara, like if you work in a professional environment, but you want something, this is this set, this set. I do not work in a professional environment. I am not professional by any means. Just sad to say. <laughs> Um, okay, on to bronzer, because this is going to be a super long tutorial, because I can't seem to shut my mouth. Actually, I'm going to put on blush first. So indecisive. 
I'm going to take the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. This is just a pretty blush. It's not a rose, but this is the closest thing I have, and it's very light and pretty, and, you know. It has a little something, something. It's really nice, though. All over my hands. Wipe this off my pants and put that to the side. Now for bronzer, I'm using the Pure Cosmetics Bronzing Act Matte Bronzer, the one that Raw Christy Beauty uses sometimes. She hasn't used it recently, but I have seen her use the mirror. I've never really used the mirror. Maybe I use the mirror this time. So I'm going in with the product. I don't know how beauty gurus use this. I don't know what for. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that technique. I feel like you're so out of the... Not out of the world, but like out of like interacting with the actual camera. Which is why I have my mirror below me because I'm still interacting with you. But I also get to see what I'm doing. And I'm not like people going like this. Focusing on on the mirror instead of on the camera. You know. Because it's not about. You know what's in here. It's about the people you're talking to out here. And it's so frustrating for me to see that. Because it's like. The person doing their makeup is like so disconnected from you. And it's so frustrating. Because it seems like. You know a lot of people who get paid for YouTube. I'm going in with the Hula Bronzer. This smells so good. Um, you know, it seems like now that the ones that, especially that ones that get paid, it's like they don't want to, you know, it's like they don't want to talk to you and like you're not that important. You're just there. They're basically just there making money instead of actually creating the content and being really creative with it. And it's so hard. Especially for people like me, like, I'm just starting out, and I, don't get me wrong, like, I love YouTube, and I love making videos, and I do want this as a job, you know? And it seems like I'm being eager, and I'm only thinking about this being as a job, and even though it's not true, like, I do want this as a I do want this as a job. I do have a passion for makeup. This is like my stress relief. And to be able to make money like that, like that's like the best job ever, doing stuff that you love. Who doesn't want that? Like, anyway, going on a little rant. We're not doing that today. For highlighter, I'm taking my O for highlighter and glazed donut. What brush do I want? I'll use my Morphe tapered brush today. Maybe. Just want a light glow. So, and I'm almost out of it. It's like done. So I'm taking this. And I'm putting it on the high points of my cheeks. I always thought that the shade was too dark for me for a while, but it's not. Like, I always thought, like, I needed a bright white highlighter, but I don't. I'm doing a very fairy look. Look, like, that highlight just clung to my forehead. Like nothing. I do need this more in. Just kind of like. I do put my highlighter lower. Just to bring out myself a little bit. So like that highlight's already banging. Like it's like boom. But I am going in with another highlighter. This is the Wet n Wild Blossom Glow. And it has like a pinky shift to it. So I figure, 
you know, why not? It is getting ready to rain. I can hear it outside. So. Mm, it's so pretty. Putting that everywhere. And you can tell it kind of has like a pinky shift to it. I know it's hard to see on camera. But I am definitely loving this highlighter. This is definitely really pretty. And it's not too dark for my skin. Oh my goodness. I can hear it starting to rain. Oh boy. Okay. Oh man. It's already on my table. Man. I tried to keep it clean. Oh. Yay. Oh well. For lips, I'm keeping it really light. I'm going in with Loyalist from the Maybelline Matte Ink line. And... I'm going to put this here. Oh, I got hiccups. And now you can actually see me put on lipstick. perfect and then for setting spray I'm using the morphe continuous setting spray oh mm -hmm. that is just oh mm. it smells like mint cologne sorry huge fanatic okay let me get on to natural light before it starts to rain Okay, so here we are. Natural light. See how pretty that looks? It does look like it's getting ready to rain really bad. But, this is it. Very light. Very flattering. Natural. Thing. It looks really good, though. Turned out a lot better than what I was expecting. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so... That is the end of the tutorial. I know, finally. Um, I will try to have more tutorials up soon, hopefully. I have a whole list on my whiteboard, so I do have some new stuff coming out. Hopefully. If things don't go wrong. Um, so, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe you may if you don't it's okay no hard feelings i get it um so you guys have an amazing day and i will see you next time